Hello and welcome again. Last time we were talking about computing phi of a number, which you remember uh, this phi of a number is the number of numbers between 0 and m, m minus 1 that are relatively prime with m. Now, if you don't remember that, I advise you to go back and watch the previous video when we actually talk about the definition of this function and we did a couple of computations with small numbers. Now, what we want to do in this video is uh, do this. There is a faster way to compute phi of m, assuming that, of course, I know the factorization of m. As, and if you remember, that usually is not uh, easy tax is if m is a very large number. But it's going to uh, work for some numbers that are not that l large, but uh, we can actually compute the uh, factorization of this number. So the way to compute this is there is a theorem, so a fact in mathematics, that tells me exactly how to compute this, assuming that I know the factorization of m in prime numbers. So let's assume the following. Suppose I have m, and this is the canonical factorization of m. So I have a, a prime a p1 to the e1 power. Multiply it all the way through to pn to the en power. And I'm assuming here the p1s through pn are all distinct primes. And here the exponents are all uh, natural numbers. So from 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Uh, I can further assume that P1 is the smaller one, but I don't need to do that in here. So just have the canonical factorization of the number M. Now, if that is M, then there is an easy way to compute phi of M. So what you're going to do is phi of M is actually this formula that is right here. Let me explain what that formula means. Assuming that you have the factorization of the number, what you're going to do is going to do a product. The first factor of this product is going to be the, f the first prime power that you have in the factorization of the number minus exactly this power but subtract one from the exponent. And keep doing that for all the powers that you see in the canonical factorization of m. So the last factor in phi of m will be the following. It will be the last prime here to the exponent, or whatever that exponent is, that one, minus exactly the same thing but you subtract one from the exponent. So that's how you're gonna compute phi of m in an easier way way, assuming, of course, that we have the canonical factorization of the number m. So let's see a couple of examples and see, let's see how actually this works. So let's find phi of 240 and phi of 150. Now, by definition, of course, phi of 240 will be the, all the numbers that are relatively prime with 240 that are from 0 to 239. So if I were to compute this, uh, in the old way, so there's one 240. So I'll have to look at z of 240, and I have to make a list from zero all the way through 239, and I have to check each one of them uh, to see if it is relatively prime with 240. Of course, that's not the way we're gonna do it here. We're gonna take advantage of the fact that we have this theorem here that tells us a little bit better way to do this uh, computation. So the first thing you want to do is you want to know what the factorization of 240 is. So first thing, first things first, we need to factor 240. Now, 240 is not a really huge number, so it won't take too much time for us to factor. So let's factor the 240 here. So let's factor that by hand. Remember the procedure we had last time. So I'm going to start with the prime 2. So 2 goes into 240, of course. It's ha now half of it. So 2 goes into 240 is 1, 120. Then 120 is divisible by 2. So I have another 2. Uh, 2 goes into uh, 120 60 times. Uh, again, 60 divisible by 2. 2 goes into uh, 60 30. 30 is also divisible by 2. So 2. 2 goes into 30 15 times. And now 15 is not divisible by 2, but it is divisible by 3. So it's going to be 3. 3 into 15 is 5. And 5, of course, is divisible by 5, so I got a 1. Now, so I have here that 240, in this case, will be the number of powers of 2 that I have here. So I have 2 to the 4, so I have a 2 to the 4 here, times the prime 3, times the prime 5. Now, with this decomposition, I can go ahead and compute phi of 240, which is the number of elements that are in this set, z of 240, from 0 to 239, that are relatively prime with 240. So how am I going to do that? 
Now, the theorem says, let's start with the first power. Now, the first power here in the canonical factor distribution is 2 to the 4. That power is going to create a factor here. So it's going to be the same 2 to the 4. And I'm going to subtract 2. And I subtract 1 from the exponent. Now, the exponent here is 4. So that's going to give me 2. 4 minus 1 It's going to give me 3. And that's going to be my first factor. Now, the second factor will come from the second prime factor in my factorization. So it's going to be 3. Now, you can think of 3 as 3 to the first power. Because that's really what happens here. This is 3 to the first power. And this is 5 to the first power. So the second factor will be 3 to the first power minus 3 to the 1 power less. But uh, this I have a 1 here. So 1 minus 1 will be 0. So I have 3 to the 0 here. And finally, I have the last factor, which will be the same thing. It's going to be 5, because it is this number that is right here. 5 to the first power minus 5 to the 0 power. And the only thing I have to do now is just compute those powers and see what the numbers are. Now, 2 to the 4 is 16. So I have 16 minus 2 to the cube is 8. Now, the next number here will be 3 to the first, which is 3 minus 3 to the 0. Now, remember, 3 to the 0, it will be 1. Any number that is non-zero to the 0 power is 1. So, basically, what I have here in this parenthesis is 3 minus 1, which is 2. So, times 2, times, and similar thing is going to happen here. 5 to the first minus 1, so it's going to be 4. So basically what I have here is 16 minus 8 is 8. So it's going to be 8 times 2 times 4. And that, as you can see there, I'm going to get 16. 64 here. So we get a 64. So 64 here, and it is important to remember what this number means here. The 64 is the number of numbers that are in this list from 0 to 239 that are relatively prime with 240. As you can see here, having the factorization makes it very easy for us to compute phi of 240. If we didn't have this factorization, or if we didn't use it, then it will become a very kind of boring text, having to go through all this list and checking one by one which one is relatively prime with 240. So the computation becomes easy. As you can see here, that's just because this theorem that we have is useful for, for that computation. Now, we can go ahead and do a phi of 150, so I have to do exactly the same thing. I need to uh, factor, have the canonical factorization of 150, and just apply the theorem here. So let's do that one here. So let me start a new blank page. So I have I have to compute, let me write it down again. So uh, we want to compute a phi of 150. So what we are really looking at is, we are looking at this set, z of 150, which is all the elements that start to, from 0 and go all the way um, to that number minus 1, which is 149. So we are looking at counting how many numbers from this collection are relatively prime with 150. And of course, we're going to apply the theorem here. So we're going to start with 150, and we're going to look at the factorization of that number. So let's factor that number. Now the number is divisible by 2, because it ends at 0, and the Half of that number is, of course, 75. Now, 75 is divisible by 3. Because, uh, now remember, a number is divisible by 3. If you can, uh, if you add the digits, and it gives you a number divisible by 3. 7, 7 plus 5, that's a 12. 12 is divisible by 3. So I know it has to be there. So let's do it this way. So uh, 3, how many times is 3 into 7? It's 2 times. And I left with 1. And I put it here in the 15, so it's going to be 15 is 5 times. All right. Now, 25 is not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 5. So 5 into 25 is 5 times. And finally, we have 5 into 5 is 1 time. So finally, here we'll have that 150 is 2 to the first power times 3 to the first power times 5 to the second power because I have two copies of the number 5 here. So these are, these are the copies. Now from here, let's do phi of 150 using the theorem. Now remember the theorem is, what I think I have to do is, I have to look at the 
uh, factors and every factor will produce a factor here. So the first factor will be 2 to the first minus 2 to the exponent minus 1, so it will be 2 to the 0. The second factor, which is 3 to the first, will give me the other factor, 3 to the first minus 3 to the 0. And in a similar way, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by the last factor, which is this one, 5 is square, that I have here, this 5 is square. And I'm going to multiply that 5 is square. Okay, this is the factor I'm going to get, 5 is square minus 5 to the power that I have here, this power minus 1, so it's minus 5 to the first. So what do I have really here? So what I really have here is 2 to the first minus 1, so that's just 1, times uh, 3 to the first is 3 minus 1, that's a 2, so I have a 2, and then times, and, and in this case here, I have 5 squared is 25, so I'm going to have a 25 minus 5 in here. So I basically have 2 times 20, because 25 minus 5 is 20, so I get 40. Now remember the important part here is what is this number re number representing? This number 40 that you see here, that's the number of numbers in this list from 0 to 149 that are relatively prime with 150. Again, doing this with the definition, going and checking every single number here will take a very long time now, but because we have the canonical factorization of the number 150, and we have the theorem to help us do the computation, it do is not, doesn't take that much time. So we found that 40 is the answer for this guy. So phi of 150 is equal to 40. So this theorem works as long as you know, of course, the factorization of the number that you have here. Of course, if this number is a huge number, then and you cannot factor, of course, this theorem is not gonna help you at all. But for small numbers, uh, we can do this in an easy way. So that's what I have to say about this video. So I hope um, you understand well what this function is because we're going to use it later. It's going to uh, show up later in the method that we're going to see the R the RS. So I'm going to start the video now and I will see you in the next video.